Hey, Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign, welcome to the month of May 2024. There is some significant fortune and luck and surprise coming for you in the house of your property, home, and real estate, but more fundamentally, where you live. And it also has some positive elements for your finances. So money and home finance luck and a surprising developments coming up in the month of May. We're going to break this down in detail, but before we get going, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Lori Lothian, using the Western Tropical Zodiac and the whole sign house system. I love the fixed stars and minor asteroids as well. And I put in about 30 videos out a month. And if you want that kind of content on all signs, please sign my up for my channel by hitting the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. And certainly like this video if you do like it. So guys, um, let's get going. Oh, and I'm doing a giveaway. So if you want to win a free reading with me or you want to have all my 2024 All Signs bundles or a free some of my courses for free that I've already taught, I'm giving a bunch of stuff away in May, once a week contest because I reached 60,000 subscribers. Feels like a big deal. And if you want to um, get in the contest, you need to be on my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter. That weekly newsletter is in the description box below where I, I do weekly forecast emails to you every Saturday. By I write them myself. So sign up for that if you want to be in the contest. Otherwise, uh, hey, let's get going. So May the 1st, no, <laughs> I'm an Aquarius, like you, Aquarius rising. I'm doing a lot of video recording, so I'm a little out of it. I apologize. Let's start with a bit the good news. Um, why is it so lucky for you this month? Like, what's going on that I'm like, oh, property, land, and real estate, big deal. <clears throat> we have Venus moving into your fourth house. That's Taurus, the whole sign house system. That's where she lives. And that's her happy home. It belongs to her. And she's going to be moving into Taurus on April 29th. And she stays till the May the 23rd time frame. Having her here is always good. It happens every year. But this time along, she's coming in there with not only Uranus and Jupiter, but the sun and eventually Mercury. What we're creating here is a pile up of goodness as Venus coming into this part of your chart at the end of April through until the 23rd of May brings you fortunes and positivity around property, land, home, and real estate. Practically, she makes you have more fun in the home, more joy in the home, more pleasure and play in the home. Jupiter makes it also the same thing, more bounty in the home, more prosperity from and in your home. Jupiter has been here since last May and leaves at the end of this May. And so therefore you're kind of new, Not it's not nothing new to see Jupiter, Santa Claus giving you some blessings regarding property, home and real estate. But now Venus is adding to the mix. And technically Jupiter was in rough shape last year. He was here, but he wasn't in good condition until the end of December. So from retrogradation and Kali Sarpa yoga, no, no, it wasn't that yoga. It was the uh, Anyway, it was in conjunct uh, the North Node, bad, bad condition, debilitated. So now we have a very healthy Jupiter connected to Uranus, the big excitement of April 21st, but a new synodic cycle. And now we have Venus joining the fray on the 30th of April. With Venus here, you're going to just have pure luck, right? Goodness and luck, and including money and love luck. So if you're single, you meet somebody close to home. If you uh, want to have money luck, you could play a lottery just down the street from you. Uh, but all, also you could have some unexpected and very surprising kinds of luck when it comes to land, home, property, and real estate. They kind of shock you because of Uranus. So get ready for that. And when she's moving through the Taurus part of your sky, giving you this luck, she's looking back at Saturn and Neptune in your second house. And this can end up indicate some financial fortunes as well. We'll break it down in more detail when I get to the individual transits of the month. Um, we want to talk about um, a little bit about Mars here because Mars has uh, been moving through your watery Pisces house, maybe having you spend more money than you naturally like, you know, during the six weeks that follows its ingress into his warrior home kingdom of Aries, which is April 30th. And in that regard, um, that's going to end. Like if you've been spending more money than you want, or you've been having a lot of uh, passionate ex energy around making money and you're just like burning out mars leaving your second house feels better for you and he will move into his home kingdom of your third house now normally that could be travel he likes to travel short distance or places you've been before more likely he moves into that part of your chart as i said on april the 30th and you will travel a lot perhaps while he's there until june the 9th on the other hand, you may have disagreements or arguments with neighbors, cousins, siblings, etc. All those extended family, aunts and uncles, types of folks in general can be in the third house. And you may have disagreements with them. Mars can cause conflict here. But on the other hand, 
if you're an online entrepreneur and you have a website or businesses and you do things in the online virtual community, this is a lot of passion drive and maybe changes you're making, decisions you're making around that part of your life. Um, with the North Node and Chiron, you may be healing a travel wound, a wound with a sibling relationship, and Mars is giving you the passionate drive, command, and willpower to finalize difficulties that have been plaguing you here since 2019. If you're into the whole sign house system and your IC floats throughout the third house, Aries, then you may also choose to relocate or move your home or travel far from home between April 30th and June the 9th. Lord Jupiter, who is going to be with Venus, bringing you this luck, I might mention in your fourth house, does leave for your fifth house. And we'll leave that part of your sky that is your fourth house on the 25th of May and spend a year in your fifth house. Instead of your fourth house being blessed, now you get a year of blessings in your fifth house. This is really good for new romance, fertility, children, um, creative and artistic projects, especially artistic projects involving writing or communicating. And you're going to have a lot of blessings and just more joy in life. If life has felt hard, believe me, when Jupiter's in your fifth house, it expands your play fun, joy, and pleasure. And that's going to increase. But you get the first wave of that after the 25th of May through to the end of the month, but indeed for a whole other year. Now, I did mention how Venus is bringing you all that luck, but she also moves on May 23rd into your fifth house. Now, don't forget, I just said Jupiter on the 25th moves into your fifth house. Now, I also reminding us, that, so Venus will also be there as of the 23rd. Now, Venus is capable of bringing you, uh, as she moves on May 23rd, add three weeks into your fifth house, a beautiful new romance, a pregnancy, a creative project that really hits the mark, entrepreneurial success, and just more fun and joy in your life. And with Jupiter there too, it doubles down on that energy of the two of them hanging out there um, after May 25th. And so you're going to find there's a lot of excitement around joy, fun, play, romance. And if you meet somebody new with Venus here, it bakes in a very beautiful energy for a very compatible and lasting love story because she is flowing from the fifth house to the house of marriage and to the house of your identity. So you could definitely, for a singleton here at Aquarius looking for love, it's not a bad time to start dating. And when Venus comes into this part of your chart, May 23rd, add three weeks, then for the existing love story that you're already in, it just brings it more sensuality, more joy, more fun, and more pleasure. Let's talk about Mercury. And uh, then we'll do the individual blow by blows. And I'm not doing the sun and moon guys, you know, new moon, full moon stuff, because I do big deep dive videos into that already. And I don't want to repeat myself. So, yeah. Um, and if you're listening for your sun, it's your career and your moon, it's your home, your sun, it's your purpose, your moon is your body. But if you're listening for your rising sign, it's all about you. Just reminding you of the differential energies of sun, moon versus rising. So here we go. Um, I'm going to talk about Mercury. Mercury has spent a dog's age in Aries because of a retrogradation. He got there, I think, the third week of March. He's in Aries until May the 15th. Um, this is a time where he's busy in your third house of travel, trips, communication, websites, online world, writing projects and writing. And because he's sitting in the third house and siblings and communicating with siblings, there's a lot of that energy that's focal, a focal point for you. This is Mercury's elemental earth year, and it means an elemental fire year. So he's really focused on issues to do in your chart with how you want to connect with your online world, your client audience marketplace, and your greater career gains. And that's his focus for you, Aquarians, this year of 2024. Now, Mercury was retrograding, as you know, and he will be direct on the 25th. So he's no longer debilitated. So you can feel it in the first two weeks of May. If you want to write an email, have a phone call, make a, have a major communications output into the world online or in real life, this is a very healthy time to do it with a very strong and very capable Mercury in the house of communications. Keep that in mind. And with Mars here as well, you can have strong, but aggressive and um decisive communication as needed, apply liberally already. All right, next, May 15th to June the 3rd, Mercury is, Mercury is moving during that time, May 15th to June the 3rd through Taurus. Now, don't forget, that's where we have Venus, Uranus, the Sun, and Jupiter all piling up there. And so you're going to be coming through a period of time um, between, let's call it, uh, let's figure it out, between May the 15th, and the 23rd, 
when you have everybody there. Between May 15th, 23rd, you got Venus, Jupiter, Uranus, and Sun. Okay, everyone's there, piled up. So that's an extremely positive time to do with property, domicile, home, where you live, things to do with legacy wealth from the family of origin. Um, there's a lot of good energy going here for you. It's really a pile up. It's so good. Again, the dates to really look at here are May the 15th to, no, let me get that right. Yes, May the 15th to the 23rd, because you still have Venus there with Mercury. Venus and Mercury here in the fourth house, buying some beautiful Venus and Mercury here in your fourth house between the dates I gave you. Again, my brain is fin finally fried. May the 15th to the 23rd, buying something for your home, a dream sofa, a dream rug, a dream piece of art. Buying something for your home that you that you want, but you didn't expect you could afford, Jupiter Uranus. Hang on. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Two sneezes. So it's, I can't believe she's sneezing through her hands on her channel. I can sneeze into my hands. I'm in my own house. I can sterilize my hands after. Okay. This was another video. Oh, my God. Anyway. I think I have an allergy right now. Um, you could buy something here, but you could sell something here. So you could sell something from your home, but you can also buy a new home or have a dream offer on a home. And you have Juno, the goddess of contracts in the house of mortgages. Slam dunk, Saturn in the house of spending. A conservative but profitable sale or purchase of a home. Very possible in May for many Aquarians and unexpected surprising means in order to purchase that home because that's what it looks like, or to sell a home, or to beautify or decorate a home, or to buy something for your home. Big stories for you uh, during that time. Now let's get going and let's talk about, um, let's talk about the details of the month ahead, blow by blow. blow. I don't cover everything, by the way, it take me forever, but I cover what I think is the most important. May the 1st to the 4th, we have Venus squaring Pluto. Okay, well, Venus is a good, good girl, but squaring Pluto, she's having a fight, right? So uh, Venus is in her home kingdom. She's extremely strong and she's having a disagreement with the God of wealth and power in the house of you. You are the one with the wealth and power. You are the one with the, the sort of Plutonian Godfather energy. And you're looking at Venus in your fourth house and she's disagreeing. Disagreements with a woman in your home, you know, May 1st or 4th. Disagreements around spending items in the home. Disagreements around object the art and things to do with beautiful beauty in the home. You have to disagree with somebody. There's somebody you're disagreeing with, and maybe there's somebody you live with. Then on May the 2nd to 4th, at the same time that Venus is disagreeing with Pluto, you're going to have the energy of a flow from Mars to Pluto. And Mars is in a position from your third house that's very positive. It has to do with wanting to power up some major decisions around travel, around your online world, about writing projects, about sibling or cousins or neighborly relationships. And there's some positive energy going on between that third house of your daily environment and Pluto. And you got Pluto, you are Pluto. Um, possibly something going on with a sibling, cousin, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, neighbor, that's going to be quite positive. While at the same time, you're having a dispute with somebody in and from your home. May the 12th to the 14th is going to be a, a Uranian conjunction to the sun. This happens every year. It's not a big deal, but it does bring, bring a spark of something unexpected. At the same time, Venus is sextiling. Venus, sun in Taurus, fourth house. Venus in your fourth house is sextiling Saturn in the second. I don't know, guys. If you have to buy something or spend money unexpectedly, it goes well. Saturn gives you the sort of steadfast um sober-minded realism and venus is the goddess of the expense and the money but it can be a surprise about what you need to buy or sell or own saturn is in the house of what you possess and he may be saying it's time to possess a, a something for your home <laughs> so look to the dates i gave you here for those unexpected developments around spending or purchasing or selling something may the 12th to the 14th to do with your home now on the 17th to the 22nd jupiter is going to come into the heart of the sun for a death and rebirth experience and he's initiating a one-year period of time starting on may 17th for you to experience some positive things to do with home and property and real estate and your and your domicile where you live your private life 
He does this once every 12 years. I'll be doing a whole video on it, but 12 years ago, he also blessed you for one year to do with things to do with home, property, land, and real estate. So if you want to just take your, your mind back 12 years ago, you know, and this is uh, 2024, that would be 2012. What positive things happened regarding home, land, property, and real estate back in 2011-12? I don't have the exact date for that um, because it is back again. And you got a one-year blessing in that regard. Now, it doesn't have to be about physical property. It can be about how you experience your home life, how you experience your enjoyment and your joy in the home. And there's a new reset button here for one year. But also, for some of you, inheritance money. Some family of origin folk can come through this chart. I, I think that there's something to be said about that as well. Now, this reset button of Jupiter, and he's invisible, so it's going to be very subtle at first, perhaps, this reset button on May 17th also is attended by a couple of other elements. One, the sun is flowing in the reset button to Neptune in the house of money and income and income sources and possessions. And therefore, this could have a very tangible result for you of increasing your income or your resources financially over the year that follows. But especially as it applies to things you do in and from the home or things to do with the property and home and purchases and real estate types endeavors. At the same time, this is all happening May 17th to 22nd. Venus is conjoining with Uranus. Unexpected sudden money and love surprises. I'm going to go with the money here. She's in Taurus flowing to Saturn in the money house and Neptune in the money house. So unexpected surprising money expenditures or increases coming through. But with Lord Jupiter holding fort here, it's more likely to be an expansion of your finances rather than a depletion of it. And we're looking at that expansion of your financial wellness and the home, the home theme, May the 17th to the 22nd. May the 23rd, Venus conjoins Jupiter. In India, this is a planetary war in modern astrology. It's luck upon luck. The two benefics are together. Fairy godmother and father are having a hand-holding moment on May the 23rd. Let's just call it a lucky day. Both Venus and Jupiter happen to be too close to the sun to be visible. So you may see the outpicturing of the luck later on, a month or two later, but or not. You let me know. How was May 23rd, Aquarians, fellow us? What happens do you win some money? Do you get some kind of luck? But if you do, it's it's about property, home, legacy wealth, inheritance money, family of origin money. Maybe mom and dad give you some money. It's that kind of energy in that fourth house, um, especially on May the 23rd, as those two come together. And we also know that, of course, Venus has just come into that conjunction with Uranus around the 18th. So 18th, she's joining with Uranus. On the 23rd, she's joining with Jupiter. What a month for you guys. What a month for us. So much excitement in our fourth house. I don't want to oversell it, but I'm pretty excited. Um, all right, keeping on, keeping on. Venus conjunct Jupiter, yeah, flowing to Neptune. It's very dreamy and beautiful energy for some kind of celestial blessings around finances and home. All right, May the 25th, Venus will try and Pluto. That's kind of a wealth energy in its own power of love, higher love, deep love, profound love, or deep money wealth in a flowing, gracious, expansive way. The two of them are doing this on the 25th of May. This is because Venus has moved now into your fifth house of good fortune, which brings its own money luck, including lottery wins on May the 25th. And she's looking back at Pluto in the house of you. But it could be a new depth of empowerment around love with a child or love for a child, love with a romantic partner, or a real intensity around your romantic and sexual life around the May 25th period. If you meet somebody under this transit for a new romance, you're baking in an intense power of love, deep love, profound, transformative love into that relationship. On May the 30th, Jupiter then also trines Pluto following in Venus's footsteps as he's now in your Gemini fifth house of money luck. So again, you could get very financially wealthy during this time, May 25th to the 30th, taking possession of money, becoming lucky with money, more abundance and fertility for um, uh, 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 creative, creative energies, birthing baby projects, books, entrepreneurial ideas, uh, May 25th to May 30th. And also maybe with Jupiter here, uh, a, a fertility transit, if you're young enough to be you or your partner wanting to create a child, um, that could be very powerful and successful around the 25th of May and also the 30th. Now, Pluto is you. 
So don't be afraid of Pluto. You're holding on to Pluto. You are piggybacking Pluto. You are riding. If he rides a tag or cannot dismount, he who rides a Pluto, you know, chariot cannot dismount. You are Pluto on steroids. So you're not afraid of Pluto. You are Pluto. And Pluto, you're looking as you are Pluto over at that fifth house on the 25th of May when Venus is flowing back to Pluto. I don't know. That's so powerful. So positive. I can't wait to see what happens for us. And then Jupiter chimes in and also flows back to Pluto. Both of those are wealth yogas. Both of those bring lots of wealth. House of good fortune is money fortunes from speculation, but just money luck. So a little money luck here on May 25th and 30th, for sure. And finally, Mercury will be, bring surprising news as he co-joins with Uranus on May the 30th. And the two of them come together in the house of real estate and property. They're the only two left, but it can be also some surprising news close to home, in your home, from your home, surprising news and developments about property, land, and real estate, surprising but positive as they co-join together. Mercury and Uranus, they flow to Juno in the house of banks, mortgages, escrow, things to do with um, lending and borrowing money. So some positive financial news could be definitely connected to real estate and property. And it could even be a refinance, a home equity loan, whatever it is, it's surprising you though. It's positive, it's good news. Maybe you put an offer on a house, you know, they accepted it, you didn't think it would happen. Maybe someone is offering to buy your house and you thought they'd never take your counter offer, but they did. That's around May 30th. So it looks, there's a lot of real estate property stuff going on here for you. Yeah, I'm, I, what else can I say? It is what it is. And finally, with those eclipses that have been hitting your third house for quite a while, I want you to know that uh, this energy is different this month of May. And I, and I, as an Aquarius, I mean, the third house eclipses aren't too heavy on us, relatively speaking, but they're still eclipses. And, um, you know, feeling into May, it's it just the feeling of May is like a blessed oasis of calm, but also returning to a sense of joy, faith and hope in life. So uh, we're really loving it because of our fifth house involvement and our fourth house involvement. Finally, let's finish up here. Um, I'm recording today on April the 15th for my Patreon community. They get this early access ad free. And if that excites you, not only do you get that, but up to three Zoom meetings with me a month, a lot of high touch content and contact from me. But if you want to come over to visit me and, and subscribe for five bucks a month, I mean, in bribing you to try uh, try me out, and you get my free course, uh, my relationship course called Sinistry, Are You My Person? It's Are You My Person, Sinistry 101. And my Chiron, the Key to Purpose course, I'm giving those away for free to newcomers to my Patreon community as a way to tempt you to try me out. I'd like to get more intimate community than I can possibly create here on YouTube. And if I ever get deplatformed, <laughs> at least there's another place where you can find me. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. A Aquarius, welcome to a better month. Uh, on steroids than the month of April and March. Take care. Have a wonderful May, everybody.